And hello, it's Noisy Andrew. I promised I'd do a how to play slash review Yabberon about Quartermaster General 1914. For some reason, there's no video uh, that I could see or that people on the Geek could see uh, that covers this game, which is a pity. It's a great game. Um, you can expect this game to only take a couple of hours. Um, it, the, the one weak point is it does pretty much need a full table. We've played this with two or three players where you manage multiple hands each. It's okay. But when you've got five people around the table and you get that banter, because effectively you're two teams um, with each other, uh, it's a bit like playing Pandemic competitively with one side being the diseases and the other, other team being uh, the, the people trying to, the cooperative trying to save the world. So it's sort of like a competitive cooperative game. Anyway, um, here's the box. Inside the box, you get a really good set of rules, which I'll hold the right way up. They're um, pretty colourful inside. There's an ex examples and things in the back. I'm not going to go too heavily into the rules, but I'll, I will show you how it's played, because like any questions you have, if you decide to buy the game, and that's really who this video is for, um, you should have no trouble understanding what's in here. This is not a heavy rule book. It's, it's well written um, and well illustrated. You also get these player aid cards, which are really useful. There's um, the order of play here, which is pretty important to how the game works. Um, and then there's a turn sequence here, which we'll go th through later. And then there's the card mix. This is, if you imagine, these are all the nations and what cards are in each nation's deck. The decks are all custom to suit the historical nature of where that army or those forces were at this point in time. Um, and I think they do a pretty good job of that. Um, one of the really interesting points here is the Russians don't have very many cards in their deck. And it's pretty likely they might miss the last turn or two of the game because they just run out of cards. So that sounds terrible, but actually makes playing the Russians really interesting. You can string your deck out, and in particular there's a couple of cards that the Russians get to play late in the game that can really help their side. Um, that's, a, that's a fun challenge. On the back of this, there's all the prepare statuses on the cards. Um, so let's just talk about the cards now. So on a card, there's the top half of the card here, which is what happens when you play the card in, in the normal part of your turn. And on the bottom of the card here, there's an action that will happen when the card is played from a prepared state. And they vary, like you'll notice this one has a skull on it for attrition, and this one here has an arrow, which is gonna help someone do some attacking. Also, you will find that um, this is the deck of cards for the Italians and the French. Um, and these are the units that you get. On the board, there's a dark blue area around Paris so that you know that this is the French and a paler blue area around um, Rome so that you know that that's the color for the Italians. And you get a pretty limited amount of units, but as you don't move the units on the board, you just place them there to claim area. Um, that's more than enough. So like the French only get four armies and two navies. The Italians get four armies and one navy. And that's enough. Anyway, let's go to the board and have a look and see how it works. Okay, so here we are with the board at the beginning of play. It's turn one. Nobody's scored any points yet. Um, and this is the starting layout that is mentioned in this order of play area here. So you can... It's very... Like, Really, everything in this game is laid out well to get people going. So, in the order of play, the first thing you will do is draft a card. And actually, you probably won't do that. Because this Burns cards are doing this. Pardon me. Um, so you would probably be fairly desperate to do something if you needed to. But what drafting a card allows you to do is to dig through a deck and find a build army or build navy card. And... The cost of doing that is discarding two cards from your hand, and that stings. So you may do it if you desperately needed it, but most times when we play this, people generally pass this action. The next step is the play step, which is where you take a card out of your hand and you play it, 
and you do the top half of the card. So the bottom half here we talked about is the prepare half. The top half is just the general we're using this card half. We are using this card half. Um, so this one is like uh, Royal Hungarian Honorary. At no cost, draft an Austro-Hungarian build army, blah, 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 blah. You would play the card to your discard pile and do that. The other thing you could do is let's have a land battle. It's a war game after all. So if you were the, um, the Austrian-Hungary player, you could play a land battle card here and the dude in Budapest could attack the dude in Serbia. Now, if uh, the Russian player who's in charge of the dude in Serbia had prepared this card here, he gets to add a shield to the attack as part of his prepare action. And this is this little box symbol here shows that it can be used when the unit is out of supply. This unit is currently not in supply. To, for a unit to be in supply, it needs to be able to trace a string of units back to its home base here, which has like got the, the color. So this is the Austrian home base, the German home base, the English home base, blah, blah, blah. So if we had a unit in the Black Sea, a navy in the Black Sea, an army in the Ukraine, and an army in Bulgaria, this unit would be in supply, and you could just play any card that had the shield symbol on it. You wouldn't have to worry about the little box. But in this case, there is no supply. So the Russians play this card, which means that's a tie, nothing will happen. You, like you have to overcome the other unit. So at this point, if the Austrian had a card prepared that had an arrow on it to like sustain his attack better, then this guy would just be taken off. And that would be the end of that. That would be the end of the play step. The next step is the attrition step. At the bottom of a card, and I will use one of this step to find one of these. Why did I not prepare? Uh, and okay, at the bottom of the card, you will sometimes see little skulls in colors like this here. And that means that um, when you play this card from a prepared state in the um, attrition step, the, the color on that, uh, like this is obviously gray on this one here, that person must discard this many cards. So in this case, it's two cards uh, and it's gray, so it's German. Um, and they have to come either out of their hand or out of off the top of their deck. Um, I think they can discard prepared cards as well. I should have looked that up. But either way, if it's from your hand, well, at least you know what you're discarding. But if it's from the deck, you just do it blind. You basically take a card off your deck and you put it on your discard pile and you don't know what it is. So given some armies do not have very many of certain types of cards in their hand, that's a hard decision to make. For instance, if you're the Austro-Hungarian army, you only have two land battle cards in your deck. That means in the game, you're probably only going to be able to do two battles unless you find some other cards that will allow that situation to change. So imagine if you attritioned one of those off your deck into your discard pile, that would be a shame. That's the attrition step. Then there's the prepare step. And the prepare step allows you to put one card from your hand into your prepared, into your prepared um, tableau, we'll call it. So let's assume that I was Austria. I might have like these cards here, face down in front of me, prepared for things like the attrition step or when I got attacked or when I did an attack. Um, so on the prepare step, I get to add one to this, only one, or I can pick one up and put it back in my hand which normally you wouldn't do, but at the end of the game, when you start to run a bit shy of cards, that might be a good play. The last thing you do is draw cards back up to seven. You actually don't have to draw all the way up to seven. I think you can, you can just draw a few cards if you want to leave some on your deck. I'm not sure why you would do that, but we do tend to find people doing that occasionally. Um, once you've done that, it's the next player's turn. Once everyone's had a turn and the Italians and French go last, the chevron moves up and you start again. Every now and again, you get to a scoring area here. There's five of them, assuming I've just counted that correctly. And you just score the number of stars on the board that your, your team controls. Um, there are some other star 
counters here that um, cards will put on the board like the Ukraine might become worth a point at some point in the game. Um, so that's what they're for. If at the end of scoring someone is more than 12 points ahead, then um, that's there's a mercy rule. They've, 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 they've won. Um, otherwise, at the last scoring round, the person who's furthest ahead on the scoring track um, is the winner. Now, that's pretty much all there is to this game. As I said in the intro, the rule book is like really well written. Uh, it's not lengthy. It's well laid out with lots of diagrams and things. So things that I haven't covered here, uh, because as I say, I wanted this to be brief, um, are easy to look up in this. Um, if you want to play a game that feels a little bit like Euro, Euro game Axis and Allies and doesn't take all day, it's not a long game to play. Uh, it says 120 minutes on the box and unless you guys all play like snails, that's easily achievable. As I think I said in the intro, you need five players. That's the one downside to this game. You can play it with fewer players where people have multiple, car, multiple um, forces that they control. But that's not as much fun as the banter that goes around the table when your team is like trying to take on the enemy in the best way possible. So uh, would I recommend it? I totally would. We haven't played this for quite some time actually, so I'm doing this pretty much off the top of my head. But when I got it, we must have played it half a dozen times in the first month or so. So yeah, this is this is a recommended game. It's like definitely, and, and like the, the historical text on the cards for the things that happened in World War One. There's a fair bit of that as well. Like, it, like the the immersiveness of this for such a simple uh, mechanic is like very good. I'd recommend it.